we searched for a man named Jim Sonnet. And the legends folks tell may be true. Most call him gunman and killer. He's my son, who I hardly knew. I raised Jim's boy from the cradle. Till the day he said to me, I have to go find my father. And I reckoned that's how it should be. So we ride, Jim's boy and me. So this is Cicero, huh? Yeah. I wonder how it got a name like that. I don't know. It sounds like an engine name to me. Well, there's the sheriff's office. Might as well get on in. Suppose he can't help us, Grandpa. We're still gonna stay over? You see to my britches and get the hate leather, so we might as well stay one night anyway here. Yeah, good luck, huh? Get the cheapest room you can. All right. Daddy. Hi. You Sheriff Tom Landry? That's right. We hid up north. You were sheriff in here now. Now, what can I do for you, mister? We hid you as a close friend of James Sonnets. That's right. Then you might be able to help us. You see, we're looking for James. So are a lot of folks. <laughs> well, I reckon we got a better reason. I'm Wilson at James Pa. You don't say. And I'm here with my grandson, Jeff. Uh, that's James's boy. We figured maybe the best way to locate James was to seek out his friends. Well, that makes sense, Mr. Sonnet. Makes sense. I'd say that was downright coincidence. Yeah, yeah you just uh, work on that gun. A coincidence? That's right. Uh, Lou and me were just talking about Jim, and then you walk in. Well, would you be knowing where James is right now? Well, that's hard to say. He has a few friends around here, but uh, he keeps on the move. Well, <laughs> we don't mind traveling so much, just so we know we're going in the right direction. Sure. Well, I'll see what I can find out, Mr. Sonnet. Thank you. You know, I can't figure you, Tom. Well, it's like you were saying, Lou. It's a coincidence. Man comes walking in, claims to be Jim's paw. Here. Now. And that's why you didn't tell him? Yeah. I reckon I better make sure he's telling the truth. What then? And I'll tell him the truth. Jim's due here in Cicero tomorrow. How far to Cicero? Mm, 40, 45 miles. What are the chances of getting a decent meal here? Depends on your choice. Beans is soggy, but the meat's tender. Harvey's Saloon, the only place in town. Here we go, here we go. Well, here you come in, friend. 
Hey, you've been doing some traveling. Uh, would you care for something to cut the dust? Pour it. Oh. Uh, you know, I reckon I'll join you. I don't usually get afternoon trade here. Your health, mister. Import this stuff direct from Kansas City. Would you care for another? No. No, thanks. Can I get a hot meal here? Oh, of course. The best, the very best. How about steak and beans? Oh, easy on the beans. Mm -hmm. Coming right up. You've been here before, ain't you? Not that I recall. This is funny. Your face looks familiar. Uh, uh, what about uh, Abilene? I've been there. No kidding. <laughs> Me too. I used to bartend for Big John Atkins. Well, I'd like to eat and move on. Oh, sure. I'll put the steak right on. Hey. You was the law for a while in Abilene. You're Jim Sonnet. Steak. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. Sonnet. The best. The very best. Funny James would make a mistake about that trick, Sheriff. He's seen me win many a contest with that stunt. No brag, just fact. Uh, he didn't make a mistake about it, Mr. Sonnet. I just wanted to see if you knew the trick, let alone do it. Well, now, if that's settled, uh, I got some awful good news for you two about Jim. He should be here in Cicero by tomorrow. Howdy. <laughs> that's a lively place. Where's Barkey? In the kitchen. Serve food here, too. <laughs> Downright paradise for a traveling man. You look like a traveling man yourself. Do I? Yeah. Saw your horse outside. You been traveling far? Far enough. Where you headed? Father. <laughs> well, I reckon it ain't polite to ask too many questions. No. But then I figure you didn't come in here to be polite. Huh? That coat you're wearing's got no dust on it. I've known him to cover a gun before. <laughs> you got me wrong. Open it. Easy. I ain't got no gun. Why not? Maybe so I won't get myself shot at by a nervous man. You figure I'm a nervous man. Nah, I didn't say that. I'll say it for you. I'm mighty nervous, boy. Every time I meet a stranger in an out-of-the-way place like this, especially a stranger with a face I've seen before. What do you mean? I passed through Ellsworth last night. Stopped for a drink. You were playing poker where I stopped. One sizzling steak. Oh, what are you doing on my trail, boy? I ain't on anybody's trail. I say, uh, I say you came in here to look me over. See how tired I was. And wearing no guns just to be safe. Well, you're a real smart man, Mr. Sonic. Real smart man. You know him? No. But I've known a lot like him. Steak. Sonnet! You go on and finish your meal, Sonnet. 
We'll wait for you. Then we can talk out here. I'm going to need a paper and pencil. Yes, sir. That kid out there want to kill you? Uh -huh. Why? Why? <laughs> I wish I knew for sure. Reputation, no grudge. They don't often say. But, but you can beat him, can't you? Maybe. But even if I do, There'll be more come flying in like bees. Can you read that? Tom Landry, Cicero, Kansas. No sense bringing you trouble. Changing directions. Hope to make it another time. Jim. That'll pay for the meal, the telegram. Uh-huh. Well, I'll take this out the back way. You sure got a good restaurant in this town. Best eats I've had in a week. <laughs> he don't usually give much praise either, Sheriff. Uh, I'm afraid I got some bad news for you, too. I guess he went into trouble. He expects to. Where'd this come from? Johnson's Crossings. That's a lot of days' ride west of here. Sheriff, how long ago you figure they sent this? Just came in. Might be a chance James is still there. We could telegraph back, asking him where he's headed. Now, worth a chance. Come on, boy. He should be finished by now. You sure he won't duck out the back? That's Jim Sonnet in there. You come out. Well, when he does, I'll be up there. You suit yourself. But it's me who takes him. They're still waiting. I didn't figure him to leave. Mm -hmm. Well, is there, is there anything that uh, you want me to do? Such as what? I, I mean, give a message to somebody in case that... No. Oh. Uh, you've got no kin, huh? No wife, no kids. Well, no wife. But I do have kin. A father and uh, a son. Oh. Well, how about dropping them a line? I could see that it gets mailed. I mean, in case I... I know what you mean. But any letter from me would be awful late, no matter what happens out in that street. Oh. Oh, I don't know how that is. I, I got a daughter in Kansas City, and I, I ain't read to her in two years. I, I, I keep meaning to, but, well, I, I'm just like you, I bet. Just like me. Uh, how old is your boy? Oh... I'd say about the same age as that young hothead waiting out there. No kidding. Isn't that funny? I, I never heard of him before. So? Well, uh, the son of Jim Sonnet. Uh, you'd think he'd have a bit of a reputation himself. That's what everybody would think if he hung around me. But he's in a good place. With a good man. See, he leads a good life. How long has it been since you've seen him? How long? A hundred years, so it seems. A hundred meals like this. Eating all alone. Never knowing what's waiting outside. My son's a long way from here, mister. 
Many is a time I've wanted less than the miles between us. But I couldn't. For one reason or another. Mostly that. Uh, what? Would you like another drink? No, thanks. Coffee's fine. I could sure use one. I don't want you waiting here. Well, I don't want to leave you. Go on out the back door. You'll be safe down the street. Gotta get my coat. It's cold out. I want to wish you luck, Mr. Sonnet. Uh, I just uh, wish that there's... Thanks. For the meal and the company. They both sit pretty well for a change. Uh, Jeff and me. Uh, you better make that your son, Jeff and me, in Cicero with the sheriff. Want to see you. Telegraph us where you're headed. Signature? We'll sign it. Uh, you better just sign that pa. Uh, hurry that along, will you? We'll wait for an answer. Charlie says Jim Sonnet's at your place. That's right. Is he coming out, Harvey? Any time, Charlie. Any time. say you are. That may be. You didn't look so tough last night when I seen you. And then why follow me here? <laughs> well, I couldn't take you on the road. Nobody would back up my claim. Here, I got witnesses. He a witness, too? Friend of mine. Now, hear me good, boy. If you're smart, you and your friend will forget about this and ride out of town. Because if you don't, I'm going to have to kill you. Both of you. I face better than you. That's no brag. Just fact. Sorry around here. Uh, 
about you missing his telegram, sir. Uh, I know how you feel, son. Do you? Well, I, I know how your pa felt when he spoke about you. His voice sounded lonely. Real lonely. You mean, talked about me? Oh, sure. <laughs> he, he said that you was uh, way off, uh, safe. And he said that more than once he wanted to come and find you and... Thanks, mister. It helps to know that, well... You know, what the boy means is you're the first person to give him a, a, a sign his pa really cares about him. And we're obliged to you. Well, I wish I could tell you more. Uh, you said he, he took the trail back toward Ellsworth? Well, he started that way. Uh, but he may have swung south toward Taylorville. Thank you. Come on, Jim. <laughs> Dear Lord, our thanks for showing us that James is living still. We pray you'll soon unite us, if that should be your will. <laughs>